Darina, you were a part of a big heist of some sort, the Young Guns 2 poster. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I am. We pulled it off. We did it. Nathan Hamill was on. We did it live, live to tape on the Riley Roundtable. We talked about it. I said we should do that. We did it, but you've been you've been taking it to the next level. We've been taking it too far. Uh, Have uh, we? Yeah, a little bit. Well, Ellis was was a, was a little upset. Was he? okay. Yeah. So th- that was my next question. Is he? Does he know? Uh, oh yeah, now he knows. Now he knows. We sent for a him while, photos. Okay. We tweeted photos at him. Yeah, but for and a he while, was like, he "Oh, just, that's cool. That looks like my poster." That's what I thought was happening. And then he finally got it. It only took him three photos. It, it took him. It took us harassing him on Movie Talk Live. Right, which I, I was a it. part of, and so everybody, if you want to check out the uh, the episode with Nathan Hamill, we come up with it on live on um, live to tape on air on the Riley Roundtable. I smuggled the poster out with Nathan that day. <laughs> you should have taken video. <laughs> I should have. It then made it to his apartment. We tried to get together, and then the the cohorts, me, Darina, Nathan, and Ken Napsok. Mm-hmm. We got, we got it over there. Then I had to go do a work thing. But you guys took the picture. We took. We spent like an hour taking photos at Nathan's apartment. Yes. And uh, there's a really there's some really good ones. There's one. Uh, there's like a for- family portrait that's coming up. He hasn't tweeted yet. There's one yeah. of me basically licking the poster. Yes. There's one of Nathan in bed with the poster. I saw so that one. Yeah. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. Good times. <sighs> it's good times. Yeah. I'm it's so the glad. stupidest, most fun prank I've ever done. Yeah. And I, I'm. It warms my heart to know that Ellis was a little upset. A little bit. Okay. Are we gonna give it well, back? Well, I to don't him? know if he was upset. I mean, yeah, we have to. We're good friends. We're just giving him crap. We're just. Borrowing it, we kidnapped it for a little bit. Are we? I yeah. mean, we, we can, I mean, is it yeah. hanging on Nathan's wall now? No, oh, okay. no, he just moves it around, kind of where it, like like he's like a friend, like <laughs> he has like a guest staying with him, and should, whatever he's doing. We yeah. should do that, like the troll that like makes its way around the world, and you take pictures in front of like here it is, the Sydney Opera House, here it is in the Eiffel Tower, yes. Nathan and the Young Guns, like the gnome and uh, Emily, the gnome. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's <laughs> it. Um, yeah, I thought it was the troll. Yeah, yeah. I but, don't know yeah. if Ellis was upset, but he, he definitely in movie talk, I felt like. Like he kind of scolded me and, and Nathan, uh, like like whatever uncle or dad Ellis, and we, oh, were, I, we were like, oh crap! I love it when he comes, Dad Ellis. That yeah, because you best. rarely see it. You rarely yeah. see it, and then you feel bad. A yeah, little bit. And I not don't, as much. I don't feel that bad right now. I th- I feel. I think we did great. We did good. Yeah. So a high five there. We did it. And let's uh, let's do it then. Let's talk about uh, that. Welcome one and all, it's episode 31 of the Riley Roundtable, a show that talks about movies, it talks about life, it talks about movies and life, and everything in between, and you heard her up top, one of my favorite people is finally coming on the show, we're going to talk, I don't even know, I'm like, fuck it, we're going to talk about everything, but mostly I want to talk about scores and soundtracks, so you know, you're a fellow lover of the medium, films, scores, all have you, it's Dorina Ariano. Good job. Did I get it? Yeah, especially with the little twist. I t- cause I, I, like I was all, like nervous. When you speak Spanish, you all do this or, do, or this. Yeah. Like well, you're Italian. It's well, cause, yeah, I mean, as you know, and you know my fiance, she is uh, Latina. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I try to say her last name, she's like, don't do that. What is her last name? Uh, I, should I say it? <laughs> do it. Can I say it? Aguirre. Oh, Aguirre. Aguirre. Yeah. Yeah. And so her dad, who is uh, Spanish, yeah. is she's like, Dad, do, do, Mark wants to do it. And I'm like, no, sh- no stop. <laughs> and he's like, what? I'm like, hi. <laughs> I can't do it. She's like, no, do it because you're really bad. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm not going to do it's it. It's entertaining. And it's good. And, and think about it, how hard it is for us who are, you know, my Spanish is my first language, right? Right, right. So me having to speak English, mm-hmm. I mean, it's my second language. It's it's second nature to me, but it's still more mm-hmm. difficult. And I still, you know, have to think about words sometimes. And it's hard. So you guys have to let us make fun of you sometimes. Please do, because yeah. I'm very white. Yeah. I, I, I have no qualms about it. I am white. I grew up in Orange County. I am the poster boy for white. And so I want to do the opposite and be cool, try <laughs> invite people, have fun, and then I get engaged to a, a Latina woman and I fuck it all up. No, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. To, I, lo- I love those couples. Ariano, those are my favorite. Yeah. Ariano Aguirre. Yeah, there you okay. go. Fucking, we're rocking it. We're, 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 we're building borders right now and bridges, I should say, not walls. <laughs> I was going to say not walls. <laughs> 
Or you can build a wall, but then build an escalator over it. Build an escalator over it. Get some pogo sticks and just fucking go over that thing. Whatever. Basically make it a video game. Yeah. That'd be fun. How are you? Good. I was so glad to have you on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah, I've been wanting to go on your show. um, Thank you. Especially because we're talking about scores. and It's like my favorite thing. Yeah, and it it, it occurred to me when we were at the Schmodown Awards over the weekend and when then we were out and about drinking and I'm like, I just looked at you. I'm like, Dorina, come on my show. I need you on my show because we, I see you on Twitter. Twitter, and occasionally you'll, you'll share the scores and soundtracks love. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. We have that connection in yeah. the scores, soundtracks. What's right off the bat? I just want to know your favorite movie score. Oh, I mean, I know. Is that that's hard? really easy? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it, that's the one thing that I don't know if it'll ever change. But uh, it's uh, Ben Jealous's Blade Runner. I mean, Vangelis, it's yeah. also my favorite movie, you know. Yes. So, yes. So that's easy for me. I totally yeah. love. Yes. It is one of the greatest scores. Hadn't known this uh, for a long time, but I was like doing some. I can't remember what I was doing. I'm like, oh, Vangelis did Chariots of Fire as yeah, well. Yeah. Well, that's why I feel like what he's most known for. Yeah. Because I think he won an Oscar for it. He did. He won an Oscar, yeah. and it's like, well, yeah, you know, I remember that that piece of music yeah. is instantly recognizable, yeah. and it's played in so many parodies and yeah. all of the all I mean, of the things. End but... of vacation. Dun, 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 right. dun, dun, dun. Yeah, it's yeah. one of those. I mean, we've all played it while we're running, right? Yeah. I played in my. I'm playing in my head right now, yeah. just like having this interview. It's just like, it's like yeah, it's so good. Oh, that's really good. Yeah. you could do like synth the beatboxing. I know because it's all synth stuff. <laughs> 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 yeah, I learned it when I was playing the piano growing up and I right. took lessons. I was like, there are a few things that I was immediately drawn to. Chariots of Fire, the Halloween theme, and the Superman theme. Yes. Which is probably my three favorites. No, not Chariots of Fire. Do you have one favorite score? No, I don't know. It's Just so like, hard. Just what like you? what would be your first I think uh, off, off the top of my head, I think it's Superman. Okay. Just because every it, like every piece that Williams does, yeah. from the obviously the most recognizable right. to when you're going to Krypton, yeah. it's the most beautiful music. When you're on the Kent family farm, yeah. it's the most beautiful music. It's like a Norman Rockwell painting come mm-hmm. to life, and you're hearing it. You're like looking at Norman Rockwell in this music's playing. Lois uh, Lane's theme. It, oh, it, can you read it, my mind? Yeah, can it's you read beautiful. my mind? Yeah. It's it's all there. Um, yeah. E.T. is another big one. I think there's some wonderful music. I'm uh, obviously have, a John Williams guy. Have you seen him live? Uh, John Williams, yes. Okay. I, I've gone every summer for the past, I think, seven years, except this past summer. Okay. I missed. I, I have done the same, except it's been like 11 or 12 years. <laughs> really? Yes. Why haven't we Super gone together? I don't know. Because we get, it's your yeah, fault. Julie and I get the picnic basket <laughs> yeah. and the wine and the and the, and the the treats, and yeah. then we're fucking rocking and yeah. rolling. I'm cursing no, that's a lot a, today. That's a good Hollywood. Oh, can we curse? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's yeah. a good Hollywood Bowl concert to I go love to that. every year. Highly recommend if you guys haven't gone. Yeah. Yeah. It's so awesome. And I um, want to do Hans Zimmer. The, which is I need oh, to see Hans Zimmer. I, I think died. I had a chance to go with you and Christian and yeah. some people and yeah, we went with Wendy and somebody else. Right, but that because somebody couldn't go. Maybe you couldn't go. I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, but I couldn't that do was, it. That was that was some shit. I know that that concert messed me up in like a great way. Yeah. Oh my god. My cousin, who is not a movie guy, he's a he's he's a carrot farmer up right. in Bakersfield. He's like, I'm going to Hans Zimmer. I'm like, whoa, I yeah. didn't know you watched anything outside of the Travel Channel. Right. <laughs> it's like, great. Yeah. So I mean, some people like the music better than movies. Or not, not better than movies, but, you know, it's a thing. Like, I love going to concerts actually more than movies. I love movies. Yeah. But, but music is, like, my favorite favorite thing in the world yeah so i love concerts even I, more than tacos so the, <laughs> yeah which, which so, is you know pretty up there tacos is the best yeah which i'm sorry i missed your taco crawl yeah you again. missed out it was really again. fun i'm glad we got to hang out at the schmodown awards though, because that was really yeah, fun that was fun yeah and when you asked me to if, if i could do it this week i was mm. like sure but we, we had all been drinking i was like I, I don't know what i agreed to but sure yeah <laughs> that's why i texted yeah. i was like hey do you remember remember when we were drinking whiskey and we had that conversation yeah. Well, I'm so glad you're here. I, I, I do want to start, actually, we'll go around to the sh- scores and soundtracks, yeah. but I don't know a lot about you other than from this space yeah. and us hanging out and whatnot. Our nerd friends. Our nerd friends. Yeah. When did you get to L.A.? Like, how did this all happen? Um, you can give me the abridged Cliff Notes version. Um, well, I for those that don't know, I grew up in Mexico, yeah. um, and I, I was there until I was 18. Oh. 18. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is sh- like surprising to a lot of people, maybe yeah. because my accent is not as thick, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I unless even... I 
drink. Yeah. <laughs> and it comes out and more. Then it, then it out, starts speaking Spanish. Which <laughs> and I, people are like, okay. That, um, but I, that, yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Please, just one day, just get really rip-roaring hammered and just yell at us in Spanish. No, actually, since you brought up Nathan, uh, our, our fellow nerd friend, uh, yeah. Hamill, uh, he, uh, we were at his house and I think we were watching a movie. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I, I forgot, I, we were drinking and I forgot the word to window. Mm-hmm. And I literally just said that thing, like the, the mirror wall. <laughs> Because I couldn't come up with the word. And I was thinking ventana, you know, thinking like window in Spanish. Yeah. And so he's never let that go. Yeah. So (laughs) things like that happen all the time. Or like suddenly, like instead of dirt road, I called it dust path. It's just, (laughs) I get very creative when I forget English. So dust path is my favorite. Yeah. So that's why. So I was eight, you know, in Mexico for 18 years. Yeah. That was a long time. Yeah. yeah, That makes sense. And what brought you out here? Uh, Well, I always wanted to move here. Like my mom loves this country Mm -hmm. like when we when we were kids we grew up in a border town and everything that was you know she loved england because Mm -hmm. of music she loved she's a huge the biggest beatles fan oh that's Uh, cool and uh and and she just loved you know everything that came from here at least how it was presented to us Mm -hmm. in the 90s yeah the u.s seemed pretty cool Mm -hmm. you know i don't know if it was but at least from the outside it looked pretty cool yeah and so eventually um and we also were on a border town so we were oh you know like where uh mexicali Okay. Yeah, Mexicali, which uh, Mexicali Taco in LA, by the way, is really good. Oh, um, mm. But um, but I was. It's only like a four hour drive from here. It's actually oh, not okay. that far from LA. So the California border. Yeah, but okay. closer to Arizona. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So we would drive from like uh, Mexicali for an hour to like Yuma mm-hmm. and drive through like the dunes. And my brother always says like that. That's where they film Return of the Jedi. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know if that's true or not. And hence capturing your yeah. nerd heart. You're yeah. like, wait a minute. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's uh, cool. Yeah, and so, so then, you came with your family. No, I actually moved. Uh, I went to San Diego for college. Okay. That's how I ended up in the country. And Got then it. and then after college, um, I studied both music and business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I ended up in L.A. to, to work in the music industry. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So and fall I fall on the dream. Yeah. So which I deleted <laughs> <laughs> because I it's a very crazy career. Yeah. Um, and so I, I ended up uh, working in the music industry for years, mm-hmm. uh, for a long time. And it was a great experience. I just didn't want to be a workaholic. Yeah. So I not wasn't into that as much. Um, it was also hard. Just I mean, you know. People say this is political. I don't think it's political at all. But like, it was very sexist back then. Like, it's a little sexist now, but it was way worse back then. Oh, I'm you know? sure. So that does not surprise me sucked. in the least. Yeah, and so, um, and uh, then I just decided to quit, and yeah. uh, and I was lucky enough to end up uh, at Google, where I work now. Right. Uh, so now I'm in the tech industry, but I get to do. I wanted to still, you know, continue doing all the things I love doing, which is this type of stuff. You know. Yeah. So I ended up. Uh, going to all the conventions, and then I met I met Nathan, um, I think, 2008. 2008, Yeah, okay. which is 10 years ago. Yeah, And geez. through him, I met uh, the Schmoes. I met Harloff and, and Ellis. And then me. At, actually, at the, then... Fo- at the Force Awakens premiere. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, is <laughs> that's, that the first time you met him? That's when I met them, yeah. Oh, my God. So yeah. this is, yeah, this is fairly new, like, kind of. I mean, I remember them going to the Force Awakens premiere. Yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, that's so, how you came into the, the circle, and that's exactly. how I met you. Yeah, because Nathan's a nerd. He sits and listens to podcasts, and like you know, like all of us. Yes. <laughs> but more so than others, and that's how he knew all of you guys. And so wow. that's uh, that's how I met everyone. And he always spoke very highly of like you and Julie. He's like, oh, Julie and Mark, I love them. I'm like, oh. I know. And then well, Nathan, Comic Cons, you know, all yeah, the good things. Nathan, Nathan, me, Julie had a an adventure at the not this last <laughs> Comic Con, but two Comic Cons ago. Yes. And I, that I was recall the trash fries. The trash fries, <laughs> yes. yes. There was a big thing yeah. where Nathan was locked out of his thing. We had run around from party to party together. Yeah. Um, and then I got a text from him. He's like, hey, dude, um, locked out of my room. Yeah. And Julie's like, I'm getting a cop. And she's <laughs> like calling like down to the front desk, which yeah. it's amazing that we got one. And then, yeah, there the trash fries were. And Nathan's like, you going to eat those? I'm like, <laughs> they're in the trash, dude. No. And he's like. Is it weird if I do that? And Julie's like, no, do it. And like the next day, she's like, he's really cool, huh? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah that's that dummy. so funny. <laughs> 
I mean, he's one of my best friends. I'm like, he's the worst. I know. Okay. He's God. He's he did the worst. say that about me. <laughs> and at, at the Riley Round Table last time, though, he's like, she's the worst. Yeah. And then Eric he... was like, everyone's afraid of her. And I was like, oh, I don't know why, but it's true. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I don't I'm know. not afraid of you. I was, well, because you're like a really smart, nice person. Okay. Yeah. That's I think, good. But I think, you know what it is? I was talking to Ellis about this this weekend because we hung out after the Schmodan Awards. Right. Uh, I took, he'll tell you, we, I took him to this uh, awesome. Uh, mini concert with a, my friend who plays stand up bass amazing oh my Georgia god Georgia Steve Popic is his name check okay. him out but, um, but we were talking about that and, and, and it's weird I think I think because we're all so freaking insecure yeah. when when people especially women exude some form of confidence mm-hmm. like it gets intimidating it's weird and I don't it shouldn't be that way it shouldn't it, and yeah but it's pretty dumb I've thought about this a lot because I've always you know, and it might be my parents got divorced when I was very, very young. And, oh, me too. What age? Uh, I was nine. Okay, I was five. Yeah, so I guess you know that's even younger. So yeah. I don't have many memories of my parents together. Yeah, and very little memories of my father growing up because he and God love my dad. I've talked about him on the show before, but he was like. I don't know what how to do this. Like yeah. it was just like with my mom and him, it just didn't work. So I'm glad that they. It, it, it didn't work out. At yeah. least they made me. So yeah. that's, you know, hey, things are looking up Riley right yeah. now. But, um, you know, it was just it was tough for him. And then once I got out of high school and into college, it was like, oh, now I know how to get in, into a relationship with my dad and, and everything's great. But it was my mother that did most like, if not all, all through my elementary middle school years. And she's a strong, opinionated woman. Yeah. And my grandmother was a strong, opinionated woman. My sister is a strong, opinionated woman. And that was just who I was around. Add my aunt in there, my my mom's sister. Yeah. And that was who I grew up with. And I've often thought about that because when they, when I met Julie, she was like, because she's well, sassy. Julie's nothing like that. Yeah, she's nothing like that. She's <laughs> a sassy Julie's pants. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, she's a sassy pants. Yeah. And I remember one of our first dates, she's like, she said something and I just laughed. She's like, Oh, I, that, I've usually scared people away with that. I'm like, why? So I don't know if it's from being around just uh, my mom and my sis, but yeah, no, that's probably. I it. love that, and I'm, I've always been attracted to women that have uh, per, not per, personality, of course, but just they'll give you shit. Like right. if if they like if you're giving it and they right. push right back yeah. and then best you, I'm just like. Yeah, hey, no, and doing? that's how I feel about everyone. That's yeah. that's. I mean, that's why I love this group. Like, we all give each other shit all the time, and that's to me, that's like a fun friendship, right? Yeah. As long as it's respectful, obviously. Like, it's gotta be respectful. you know, like if you steal somebody's poster, that's I think that's pretty awesome. So it's so cool. It's like it means like you really love them as humans <laughs> if you steal their posters. It's a sign of love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that. I love so you're you got here. You're now at Google. Uh, you met Nathan. You're you're part of this this nerd space. Um, what was at one point it was music, but now is there like, because you're extremely talented on on the mic. You're extremely well spoken. You're That's like very nice of you. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, is it like, do you want to stay in tech? Do you want to act, direct, write, right, 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 dun, 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 yeah. down the line? I want to do all the things, not yeah. act. I'd no. be a horrible actress. Like if somebody was like. Oh, be sad. I'd be like, I don't feel sad. Like I just had pizza and it was awesome. So I don't know how to be sad. So. But you have to do it method and internalize it. Now <laughs> no. think of the line, but then yeah. throw it out there, but no. do it backwards. So you feel it inside and then emote and it'll be there. I will be your acting teacher. That's pretty good. Uh, I started as an actor. And when I got out of USC, I was like, this is not for me. Yeah. I can't do this. Yeah, It's a lot of work. I respect people that are really good at it. Yeah. It, that's you know, yeah. props to them. Props to them. Um, but well, uh, but um, behind the camera, though, uh, yeah. I've actually been doing a little bit of it recently because I have that my I've created my dumb ch- like YouTube channel. Yeah, like and a I love year it. ago or whatever. <laughs> right. And uh, and we do this type of stuff where, we're, where we just chat about you know things Everything. we're nerdy about. Yeah. But um, but then we also started recently, very recently, doing doing sketches. Mm. And so I have a few friends uh, that I've been like, co-writing with. And nice. then um, we ended up actually using the Collider Studio. That's uh, right. Thanks, Fernandez. Yeah. Uh, uh, like thanks, a, Dad. Yeah, like a week ago or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, and we shot it here. And it was really weird and kind of intimidating to, like, have to direct everyone. and like. Were you directing it? Yeah, yeah. Because, awesome. I, mean, I mean, I had to. Like, I, I was the one that was shooting it, you know. Yeah. Uh, Beardo actually also came to help with the sound, oh, which nice. is pretty awesome. Hey, Miss Beardo. I know. 
Yeah. Um, and uh, and yeah, and and we had you know Ken was there and 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 other people that are really good actors. Yeah. And um, it was interesting and it was really fun, but it was kind of definitely my first experience actually like telling people what to do. <laughs> and I usually yeah. love that doing that at work, <laughs> but when I'm having fun, I'm like. Hey guys, like I get, I, I, I actually kind of get a little bit shy about it because, yeah. you know. Uh, I, I, I feel you. I'm, yeah. I'm like very, I had to direct an awesome tacular sketch and I was like, I don't like that. Right, I don't right. know. I'm, I'm like fine. I like to produce right. and like I help back up, but then the mostly I just want to write. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I want to write movies and put them yeah. out there and all that kind of stuff. I can feel like you being a good writer. I don't know why it's just a feeling I get. You, um, so you I are mean, I, I used to I used to write for uh, like uh, just even journalism type stuff. Like yeah. I used to do like nerd journalism. Like right. I was on like uh, a few websites and I would interview celebrities at Comic Con. You know, like that type of stuff. So I'd have yeah. to do write ups on that. Sure. Uh, but but uh, for for sketches, it's actually been fun because. Uh, a lot of my coders and I are like are huge fans of like old school SNL, you oh, know, yeah. so like we have like it's basically like stoner humor and and we ended up doing uh, sketches a la like, you know, like Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy, like that, yeah. like, like that type of just like favorite. really like ab absurd, ridiculous uh, um, type of humor. But uh, so, yeah, so we'll see what happens. I'm excited about that. But that's just kind of like on the side. Right. I, I, I like uh, where I work a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh We'll we'll see what happens with that because it's a very big company and yeah. we shall see if they continue being awesome or <laughs> yeah well Google I mean they have a great future ahead of them I mean I know they're an upstart but you know we'll see how they do <laughs> I can't imagine can you imagine just working at the first day of Google yeah it'd be like huh in the garage in or the like, garage yeah. yeah yeah the very first day yeah, yeah, yeah. well that's cool I mean yeah I can see that about you I mean obviously you know you brought up a great point with all the people here. Like you just kind of fit in and you feel like you can steal their Young Guns 2 poster or you can give them shit. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, important. And I like that. And I'm so glad to have met you. So Yeah, same here, Riley. Um, thank you. Well, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. How many times am I going to say that? I'm so glad Darina is here, everybody. I am so glad to be here. Um, all right. So how did you get into scores? Oof. Um, I mean, like, what was the movie that did it? So is it Blade Runner? No, I mean, no, I think my earliest memory of getting a soundtrack was probably Alan Menken and John Williams. So I I, I, I made my mom buy me Little Mermaid okay. and Home Alone. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Um, and which is one of my favorite John Williams scores, like overall. It, it's it is so underrated. Fucking amazing. Nobody talks about it's it. It's so good. It's, and he never plays it when I go see him, and it's very upsetting. I know, because yeah. it's like. Dun, 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 so good. Dun, 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 it's dun, like dun, dun. I love that, that score. That is a perfect example uh, of how the music just is, has, is its own character in the movie, you know, and, and how like you don't even need a bunch of cheesy dialogue going on because the music just makes you feel it everything that's a, that the screen is showing you, you yeah, know? It, like, it, it gets in your soul and it's like, it's helping. It's yeah. like, um, have you ever listened to the soundtrack show, David W. Collins? No. David, you would really like this. Okay. David W. Collins, God, he's he's going to have to start paying me as an advertiser. <laughs> because you keep talking about it. I do. I bring it up yeah. all the time because he goes deep dive into all the soundtracks. And my favorite thing he did was it was called Star Wars Oxygen, if you want to look it up. And okay. he went like two hours on every Star Wars movie score. Okay. Oh, somebody did tell me about that. Yeah. I just didn't know the name. Yeah. And he would just like be able to tell you, I mean, you're learning storytelling from right, him right. through the guise of music. Right, right, right. And he calls it oxygen. Yeah. It's the movie needs its oxygen and mm -hmm. that's the score. And I've always, I think I've always reacted to that. And I think the first one that really got me was E.T. when I could yes, like actually that's go, a good one too, that's, yeah. that's wow. And obviously yeah. Star Wars, Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So Alan Menken and John Williams, yeah. I love that you brought up Home, Home Alone. Yeah, it, that's, that's, um, and it's, it's actually uh, because I'm, I'm basically the music curator when it comes to anything that fam my, I do with my family or friends. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think you've been to my Halloween party. Oh, yeah. In, and, uh, and yeah, I like, literally, like, that's, like, the biggest thing that I care about is the music playlist. Like, I get super nerdy about it, like, in an annoying way where, like, I change it every year. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and it's it's really, like, I, I think that would be, that would be my dream job, actually, being a music curator for all of the, oh, my God. all of the things. Uh, but, uh but I, we play the Home Alone soundtrack like on Christmas, you oh, know, yeah. like every year, you know, like there's, there's, that's like a big one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just remember, like, it's funny that you brought up E.T. because you know that scene where um, I think, 
is it is it Elliot that uh, is or you know, when when Elliot first sees ET actually move stuff around mm-hmm. in the room, remember? Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's like there's no there's no dialogue in that whole scene. Right. It's just uh Williams' score. Yeah. And it's gorgeous. Like it's so pretty. Like and there's nothing going on except like Elliot's like, holy crap, like yeah. like what am I have I gotten myself into, you know, as a kid. Like it's just such a magical, beautiful moment. It it really and, is. And so seeing that type of stuff on screen, like I remember, you know, being like, Mom, I want the soundtrack. You know, yeah. like every time we went to a movie with my my mom like because my parents were divorced so, and my brother was is much older than me okay and so um so when he went off to college like that was it like my mom and i would go to movies and i would make her buy me the soundtrack oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. same with like night before christmas you know which she was very like weirded out by that <laughs> danny elfman come on well no she was just like in general anything that was goth she was like oh, oh no what's my daughter doing you know she would have to like she would like knock on the door when i was listening to radio head so computer and like ask me if i was okay oh that's another so, great album yeah. oh, i love that <laughs> Yeah, E.T. is up there. That in, It's interesting. I would always gravitate to, like, the music that's underscoring the dialogue. Sometimes right. I would hear yes. these things and, like, there's the e, – my. I think my favorite suite or my favorite, like, uh, I guess clip it out of the movie, but it's, like, 15 minutes long and it's, like, the minute Elliot and his friends mm-hmm. get E.T. Yeah. and they get on their bikes mm-hmm. and then it's the rest of the movie. Williams does not – Stop scoring yeah. the rest of the movie from riding the bike. Clink, 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 clink. And then it goes dun, into the yeah. flying theme, and then it goes in when he's saying goodbye. Oh, that's and I, I can't, I can't deal with that shit. Can we man. just talk about that for a second? That nope, we can't because I'll start crying. I don't want to cry in public. No, no, no. Let's cry on. <laughs> let's cry because when Welcome he to does, the crying and podcast. it's like, and the music underneath yeah. it, it's like, it's like, come. Yeah. And you Stay. missed John, you missed John Williams this year, right? This last year. Yeah. And they did that. But I saw it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, good. Years ago, okay, he okay, did okay. it. And thank God. He also okay. did the barrel chase yeah, for one yeah. of mine. For Indiana Jones. Uh, as he well. did. Yeah, he yeah. did the idol. Yeah, yeah he yeah. did the beginning of Raiders. Uh, but but what was seeing the, other the one? ET scene, like what you're talking about, exactly. Live. Like when he's, when he's saying, like, she's like, he's like, come, stay. Just stay. And, and everyone's like, oh my God. Yeah. Like the entire Hollywood Bowl was like hugging each other. <laughs> I, it, it gets me every yeah. fucking time. And it's the music. And if the music wasn't there, it would not be the same thing. And, yeah. and that's. That's why that's why scores are so important. This, like, like this is the meat of it. This yeah. is what I want to get into and yeah. how important the score is because there are, there are there are like composers out there that can make the movie yeah. much better than yes. the, it actually yes. is. I mean Pearl Harbor. Hello. <laughs> well, <that's>, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Michael Bay fans. I guess. Uh, yeah. But, yeah eh. It's Pearl yeah. Harbor. Yeah. I mean, was that Hans Zimmer? Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. granted, it sounds a little like a thin red line, but it's a good score too. So, well, yeah. Hans Zimmer, yeah. you know, we watched, they all copy themselves. <laughs> he, I was watching The Prestige last night. We okay, just yeah, yeah. randomly ended up watching The Prestige, yeah. and he's scoring the movie, and I'm yeah. like, "There's a little Man of Steel. There's mm-hmm. a little bit exactly. of Batman. Yeah. There's a little bit of Inception. Like you I can, can hear recognize it. it. He's yeah. on the same chords. Yeah. I mean, he's around there, but he just arranges it differently, yeah. and that's his, his mastery. Well, and composers know like what you know chords and what. Uh, arrangements are actually going to make people feel certain things, right? Like, exactly. Like they, you just know, like, like whatever F major, it's like, oh, that's a pretty one, right? Yeah. Or, or this one is like a grandiose sounding one, right? right. Like, or this one's a really sad sounding one. So, or if you want to hit but, some dread, you know, Dear Siri. Yeah. Have you ever heard the D? This is again, David W. Collins. Yeah, Come yeah. on, dude. Get point me on your show. I'm gonna actually, I'm going to reach out to him. I want him on the round table. Um, um, he, uh, can he, we go back to talk about me, Red? Yeah. Okay. No. Do you know David? Have you have you have you here? No, why don't no, you hit I, him up on Twitter for me? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, um, but 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 what you were saying is, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about chords and things like that. But um, you asked me what my favorite was. So mm-hmm. going back to Evangelist. Yes, please. The reason that one is like downfounding to me is because it doesn't have the same like orchestral structure no. as most scores that we know nowadays. You know, with computers, like and and people trying to copy what he did. Right. You know, it's different. Even Hans, you know, like the fact that he he moved away, like like his old scores that were really pretty, like whatever, Lion King or Nine Months, like all of those old, really pretty oh, orchestral scores. Oh, my God, I love that you brought Isn't up Nine so Months. Pretty? It's so great. So pretty, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that clarinet, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, you guys should check it out. It's really good. And, Not uh, a bad movie either. 
No, I Robin, like it a Robin lot. Williams is really funny. Robin Williams is funny. Um, Hugh Grant, Julianne Moore. Come yeah, on. they beat up a Barney dinosaur dude, and <laughs> that was right. pretty funny. That was pretty. Tom Arnold. anything yeah. with mas- mascots is great, uh, <laughs> especially mascots falling. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but um, but and then he, you know, Hans moved on f- away from that, and and you know when he started doing like Inception or like Interstellar, which yeah. is one of my f- which is my favorite Hans score actually. Wh- which one? Inception. Interstellar. Oh, Interstellar. Interstellar. Yeah. You know what? Also I know. better than the movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Score is better than. Yeah. The movie. I had like I saw Interstellar stellar once and i was like it's yeah. good yeah. I, it didn't, the music's so great though that's what i hear yeah and yeah. uh but but with vangelis like he just did i mean he added like world music sounds mm-hmm. to you know these synthesizers yeah. and 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 every song and every piece of music in the blade runner soundtrack like i can because i'm a nerd and i've listened to it almost every day mm-hmm. i can i know what's coming but it doesn't. It, it's not like very melodical, right? right? It's like more like ambient sounds, you know, that that make you feel a certain way. And it completely makes that movie actually realistic in the sense of like this is another world. This is a this is this is sci-fi. Yes, you know what I mean. It makes it timeless. Yes, because it's exactly. like there's no there's no discernible like like you you're mentioning there's no discernible like chords or mm-hmm. kind of like there's no like, there's, rhythm to it. it exactly, just, it's it, yeah ambiance is a great way to put it. And yeah. then all of a sudden, before you know it, you pick up the patterns. Uh-huh. You pick up that there is a a structure to it. Right. And I love that. Yeah, I I got the chance to interview Alexandra uh, Desplat. Yeah, yeah, he's and so for cool. Isle of Dogs. Oh, and nice. I, so I watched the movie and then was listening. I'm like, this guy's doing themes with drums, yes. with Japanese drums. He's, he's so good. And I'm like, you and I and I asked the question. I'm like, was it you know? There's no discernible theme in right. this until you hear the drums and mm-hmm. then you hear it. his eyes lit up where yeah. he was like, ah, somebody that actually knows what I was doing. Right. So yeah. what was it like? You know, doing the drums. Yeah. <laughs> Man, where's the music? <laughs> you know, like, it wasn't yeah. like that. So thankfully, I felt like, oh, okay, I know yeah, a yeah. little bit because, I, you know, I, I I play by ear. I wish I, I – if I could go back, I would probably want to be a composer. Yeah. If I yeah. just go back and learn how to write music and learn how to play the piano. You could still do it, especially now with computers. You know, I I yeah, did okay. I composed a, a, fil- a film score. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yes. My friend – You're, no, you're nobody, burying the lead here. Nobody is, nobody is ever listening to it. And why is that? I don't want them to. No, um, <laughs> no. My friend uh, uh, Ben Lee, he actually uh, he uh, produced and directed his own movie. Like okay. it's like an indie comedy. Mm. Uh, it's uh, called Office Ninja, <laughs> and <laughs> it's. Uh, I love that. Yeah, okay. and so um, and he, you know, we talked about. It. He's like, "Do you want to do this?" I was like, "Sure, I'll write the score." And yeah, and, yeah, and I just did it on like Logic Pro, and I, I was, oh, I yeah. wasn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I knew what I was doing musically, but it was actually really hard growing up. You know the classical way, right? I grew up uh, uh, playing the cello and, okay. and writing on sheet right. music, like John Williams writes. You yeah. know, and um, but nowadays everyone's all about audio software, music software. You know, so so that transition was actually really hard, like figuring out. I'm like, okay, well, I know what sounds I want, what I right. know what notes I want to play, and but but actually like recording it. And it's then different. like yeah, it it was it was definitely a challenge, but but it was fun. Like I I that's so cool. That would be amazing to to actually do that as a career. Yeah. I, I yeah. I should actually look. Let's into just that. do it together. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Let's okay. just write music. Let's okay. write a movie. Uh, let, let's write music for a movie that okay. we'll get to later. Okay. <laughs> It'll just be let's the music. Let's make a movie out of uh you know the stolen Young Guns two poster. That'll be our and protagonist. Then, yeah, and then we'll we we'll can... make like a sad. Um, yeah, it's like a. Like, like more like more Hans Zimmer than Williams. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with a little Vangelis mixed in, so okay. some ambiance. You know, when the poster is going on a road trip yes. with uh with the postcard. Let's do it. We'll do. <laughs> God, I love that. <laughs> My God, I could talk. Yes, scores and soundtracks are are the thing. I, I say scores and soundtracks because it's like the schmodown. Right. Right. And it's it's. But soundtrack is basically you know all the all. score. Yeah. It's yeah. everything. Or with or the, the score. soundtrack of like a various artists. You know. Yeah. Song various about. artists. Yeah. I which know. there's some really great soundtracks out there too. Like. Yeah, but I'm I'm always going like I know like singles. That's a great soundtrack. Right. You know that's that's like staple from the '90s where you know you get your you know your Stone Temple Pilots yeah, yeah. in there and whatnot, but. I'm going to grab that. Like I like a lot of people lost my mind over James Horner's Titanic score. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, it just hit me in the feels. Okay. And so I, I think it's because that movie's so cheesy to me. I was like, okay, it's fine. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Titanic. I 
personally like the movie. I saw it a lot in the theaters. It 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 was a phenomenon that hit me. It was like right, right at the time where I was really into the movie, movies I should say, yeah. and it was a score. I was like, wait a minute, this score, I would cry at that score. Yeah. But I remember looking for that soundtrack, mm -hmm. and all they had they never had it in really? stock. I, I like, owned it. So I owned. I, like, I, yeah, yeah, I owned it. I finally found it, but I remember searching everywhere, and I went to Circuit City when Circuit City was still around. <laughs> Kids are like, like, what's that? Yeah, Circuit City Kitties was a, a tech store like a Best Buy, but it went out of business. Right. Yeah. So I went there. They didn't have it. Then I went over to Tower Records. Oh, boy. Tower Records gone, too. That went to Tower Records. Sense. Wasn't yeah. there. I can't remember where I ended up getting it, but I was like, I, I specifically looked for it, and that was like one of the scores I remember. Yeah. But same with like Star Wars when Return of the Jedi came out, and I was that age at night at 1983. Yeah. Um, With I was like, good old Yevnub. Yeah, good old Yev. I know. I already. I miss I, I, that. I, like I already get comments about that that I think Yevnub is better, and everybody's like, "How dare you?" Yevnub yeah. is better, and so is Jabba's palace scene. Oh, that's. I mean, that's something else. That's Cause not at least, even because at least the, the 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 song that replayed Yevnub is still fine. Yeah, and it's actually sadder, and it like you know uh, it. it one of my Twitter followers made the good point that it's like it's more melancholic. Yeah. And like Yevno is very happy for the moment. It actually makes sense, even though it, I like Yevno's song better. It's but, true. Uh, but the Jedi Rock song, I'm sorry. No. <sighs> no. 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 Ba -da 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 -da. no. Shut the fuck up. This is awful. So, it sounds so really weird. Really bad. No. Especially because Lefty Nick is amazing. Yeah, because it sounded so foreign. It's yeah. like. Boop, 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 yeah, boop, and that's the thing. That's it's, what I love about, you know, when you're when you're making sci-fi or fantasy movies, I want to hear different sounds, right? right? That that actually make me escape and and feel like I'm not, you know, in this planet. Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so transport me to a galaxy yeah. far far away, please. But when you have like a freck a freaking jazz <laughs> like <laughs> that dee 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 so, dee so dee. And I'm like, "Wait a minute. That's yeah. that that doesn't that, sound right. Yeah. And so I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what happened. But anyways, I don't know what we happened We all make there. mistakes. We <laughs> do all make mistakes. So you got into Vangelis. That's one of your favorites. Yeah. But what are some of the, the uh, like, what are some of the working composers today that you're, like, looking at and going, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, well, Alexander Desplat's amazing. Um, oh, yeah. Desplat, my favorite of great. it is, is uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah, it's gorgeous. So Shape of uh, Water is mine. Oh, after, really? After okay. re-listening to it, because it really stood out for me when mm -hmm. I watched the movie and then... Um, when I, again, when I was doing my, my prep for it, I was like, let me, let me get this one. Mm -hmm. And it's been now on repeat yeah. to, to the point where Julie's like, you were to listen to that fish movie again. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I am. Sorry. Alexa, stop. Um, I'm so sad there was no fish, fish penis, but anyways. Uh, I mean, it, it's there. It just would have been funny. It's just, it um, uh, scales are over it. <laughs> <laughs> and it just. I don't know. <laughs> Shit, sorry. Sorry, I had to bring penis, fish penis to it. Um, you know, because somebody was calling it the fish fucking movie, and I was like, well, it's, 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 it's accurate. accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was a beautiful <laughs> soundtrack for the fish fucking beautiful. movie. Um, but uh, uh, sadly, uh, the newer one, uh, Johan Johansson, who passed away last year. I was going to say. Yeah. Johan you know, Johansson, he's yeah. Arrival. Amazing. <sighs> what else did he do? Well, I'm... last year, the best movie of last year, Riley, Mandy. I have not I seen know. Mandy yet. I know. I've yelled yet. at all of you. I know. All of you. Like, I told Christian to see it. I told Mark uh, Ellis to see it. I Nobody's to see listened it. to me. I Ellis actually fell it. asleep, he said. And I was like, how dare you? How dare you? Yeah. Indeed. The only one that listened to me that's sort of related to you guys is uh, Jeremy Johns. He actually, I was yelling at him. He finally put up his review. Oh, good. So yeah. you need to do it, too. It is a beautiful uh, score. And it's a badass score, and it is a, such a weird psychedelic trip movie. That's what I hear. And it's so Nicolas Cage, and it's it's the director's just. I think what he did is groundbreaking. Yeah. And uh, for him to to make a movie that you know has all of these beautiful colors and and film it in a way that ha that at least I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. um, Johan's score is like perfect. Oh, he's and yeah. and he did every like he has really pretty like sad sounds in it mm -hmm. but then he has like one song that's like basically like a stoner doom metal song <laughs> like it's all over the it's it's crazy like i'm so sad it didn't get it hasn't gotten recognized because yeah. it's so amazing and it bummed me out when i heard he passed because yeah. you talk about uh especially arrival which i revisited yeah. the other night that talk about an atmospheric kind yeah. of you know little inspiration from vangelis it's mm -hmm. like it you f you feel it i mean it's almost like he's helping you 
and Amy Adams' character discover the language that is not spoken. Exactly. So it's usually the the music is like kind of locking you into the movie, going, you, "This is what you're going to get." It's mm-hmm. almost like he's foreshadowing the aliens and the language, and he's like setting you up for that. When you see it, it's just like. It's like this really so great crazy. visual kind of – sorry, auditory kind of yeah. storytelling. And that's what's so exciting about uh, scores we're getting nowadays because there's so many sounds we can get that yeah. we couldn't get before right. because we didn't have computers. Right. Right? And so that's that, – I mean if, if you go to um, – uh, like I said, like the Hans Zimmer concert, like he's basically he doesn't even play scenes from his movies like like John Williams does. He mm-hmm. actually has uh, psychedelic images. Right. And and, uh, and I've heard that. So yeah. it's like he's kind of adding like an it's like an acid trip for the exactly. it's like Grateful Dead for composers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> like... Sounded good. <laughs> Um, I know because I saw pictures like for my cousin yeah, that I was yeah. mentioning. He's like, check this out, check this out. And then yeah. his use of like the the drums and then well, like, yeah, Man of Steel, Man though. of Steel, which yeah. I liked your tweet the other day. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I know. We've, I was... talk, we've talked about Man of Steel on here. It's my favorite. It's yeah, my favorite I, of the DCU. I, I, it's one of my favorite of superhero movies. That's what I was saying on my tweet. Yeah, and it I, is. Yeah, and I think most people are like, "Thank you," you know. But but there's there's obviously some people are like, "What are you talking about?" And I'm yeah. like, "You just need to rewatch it." No, rewatch it. <laughs> yes. I I love it, and I, yeah. I mean, it's half the the problem I had with Aquaman is that it's like Man of Steel. I'm like digging what Snyder was serving out to yeah. me. It's a 180 to Aquaman. Right, right. It's like. I, I loved that idea that the the whales were sent by Aquaman to help yeah. Superman. Yeah. And then. Yeah. yeah, I know it's it's sad. It makes me sad. But yeah. um, but I actually I thought Aquaman looked so good. Oh, I it re- looked fantastic. It, I really enjoyed that part of it. I was yeah. like, wow. It's and and the score was actually pretty cool too. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Henry was, Gregson Williams. Yeah, he uh, did Wonder no, Woman. No, uh, Rupert. Rupert. Oh, yeah. sorry, Henry's his brother. Yeah, yeah um, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, Rupert did. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman and Aquaman. Yeah. yeah the, the Aquaman score is great. And it's the Wonder really Woman, cool. I listen to No Man's Land yeah. all the time. Yeah. Because it's just. He, it's pretty cool. It's so cool. But the theme, though, by uh, Junkie and Hans is so the best. amazing. Yeah. Like when she shows up in uh, Batman v Superman mm-hmm. and saves Batman and they play her theme, I like lost my shit. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. This is going to be an episode of me just making noises with my <laughs> mouth, trying to sound like the soundtrack. Um, okay, what are some other ones that uh, new ones? So new, new composers. Ones, yeah. uh, I love Johnny Greenwood. Johnny Greenwood from uh, Radiohead. Oh right. Uh, yeah. So, so what's he doing? Is he doing movies now? He's been doing. He's been doing scores for a while. He's been working with uh, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. So oh. he did like There Will Be Blood. Uh, he did Phantom Thread. Uh, oh Phantom God. Thread was actually my favorite score of last year. Uh, in fact, uh, this nerdy thing I did for my channel, I did like a best scores of uh, the year mm-hmm. last year, and I'm doing another one for 2018. Oh, cool. Um, and I basically just put like my – it's just me being a weird YouTuber blogger no, person. No, I, I and, need this. And, uh, and I just listed out like my top ten scores of last year. And and Johnny Greenman was my top for Phantom Thread. Really? Mm-hmm. What are some of the other ones? If you uh, so from you that can uh, share. the second one actually, which is another composer I love that's new is uh, newer is uh, Daniel Hart. Daniel um, Hart. Okay, he I'm did, totally taking notes for myself. Yeah, yeah. No, he's he's really great. He did uh, a ghost story uh, a uh, couple of years ago, yeah. and and that movie is very slow moving and kind of you know sad and whimsical at the same time and the score is great yeah it's like it's one of those movies that it like like blade runner you know like where you have uh uh the the music is guiding the audience as to like how to feel more so than the dialogue you know right um and um i mean two years ago also uh blade runner yeah 2049 that the score was great it was great that's a benjamin walfish with with hans Hans. yeah and, and Benjamin he's, he's did great. it, yeah. which I loved. Yeah, and that that is an underrated score. Yeah, I was going to bring him up because that was one of the new ones I was listening to, as well as uh, have you heard of John Bryan? Oh yeah, yeah. No, he actually Eternal uh, Sunshine of the Spotless yeah. Mind. Yeah, no. Have you? He actually plays on sometimes at the Largo really? in L.A. Yeah. And he and he sometimes plays his score. So next time he plays, I'll let you know. Yeah. yeah. Field trip. Yeah. No. Um. Uh, yeah. He. Did, uh, I love his Paranorman score. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah, because yeah, he he's did done some of the Leica stuff, yeah. uh, which I love all the Leica movies so much. I and, love the Leica movies; yeah. they're the best. Yeah, Kubo is Dario Marinelli. Uh, D- Dario Marinelli yeah. is that the, the composer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who did like V for Vendetta? And that's right. It's like I sound I, really like, nerdy right now, right? Like, are you like, kidding me? It's really embarrassing. Okay, one. 
the the Riley Roundtable listeners are the best. The best. <laughs> they like thank God no, because no. we don't get the you know the nonsense of like you yeah. know Twitter. You know what you should do? It's like what? Shut up. Cool. Okay. Well, yeah, that's because you're awesome. That's why they're awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, um, but I appreciate it because I think you know one thing that a lot of people know about me is my love of scores, and yeah. so. When we're sitting there talking over a whiskey on the weekend, I'm like, wait a minute, yeah. we need to do this. Because, one, I think a lot of people want to know, sure, everybody's heard of John Williams. Sure, yeah, maybe every, like, like Hans Zimmer. But it's the new ones that I really want to shine a, yeah. a, a light on because I also grew up with, like, Jerry Goldsmith, uh, yeah. Alan Silvestri. Well, when um, you mentioned James Horner. James who, like, Horner. I literally cried when he died. <laughs> like, I, I, I rarely cry when uh, someone famous dies, but, like, he was, like— like he basically wrote most soundtracks of when I was a kid, other than like John Williams, like like all those Don Bluth movies, like yes. gorgeous soundtracks, like an American Tale, you know, uh, Land Before Time, mm -hmm. Casper, like a bunch I, of I like family movies, and all those scores are so gorgeous. Legends of the Fall. Uh, yes. <laughs> there is a there is a track, and it's if you haven't seen Legends of the Fall, this is a spoiler. Uh, so you can turn it off for like five seconds while I mention this. But when Samuel dies, mm -hmm. um, the brother, the youngest brother, um, that music is some of the most poignant, just tragic like it. And it gets me. Mm -hmm. And it's 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 this long clip of music that he plays because it goes through him trying to save Samuel. It goes through him kind of going through the dark stuff, yeah. Brad Pitt's character, and then coming home and visiting Samuel's grave. Right. And then the music is epic. It's like, when he's riding the horses. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And then it goes down, and he's sitting by the grave crying. Yeah. And Horner just goes, yeah, I'm going to fuck with you right now. <laughs> I'm going to make you cry. You're not going to be able to handle your life for about right. five minutes right now while I'm playing this music. Yeah. And it is... Oh, the power of music. It's That's so, so cool. That composer could just be like, I'm going to make people cry right now yeah. at the, in this moment. That's so, like like that's one of the things I actually uh, that I really liked about Last Jedi is mm -hmm. they added the Luke and Leia theme mm. like a little bit when when Luke and Leia meet again oh, for the yeah. last time, you know, it's, that was that was pretty cool. That's my favorite. Uh, I'm glad they did that because I'm I was so like, glad yeah. I um, needed that. Because uh, that's one of the best themes that he created for Return yeah. of the Jedi. Yeah, it's Luke beautiful. Luke and Leia's theme is just beautiful. Yeah. Do you have a favorite Star Wars theme? Uh, Princess Leia's theme. It's really good. It's been yeah. it's it's been a long time coming, but like whenever, and I think it was cemented when we lost Carrie Fisher. Yeah. I just because that music starts playing. It's so you know, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, Yoda's theme's up there. The regular yeah. theme is good. The Force theme. You obviously. know what I love that not uh, I don't think is that popular, but I love it is the asteroid feel. Are, are you <laughs> I love kidding it me? So much. It's the best. It's so. It's like the most fun adventure like theme that there is, like action adventure, like kind of like the Goonies. Yes. You know, um, it, it's so it, it that I mean, the minute you hear it, you're like, oh, we're in their asteroid field. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's kind so of great. iconic. My favorite moment in I think Empire Strikes Back is the best of oh, the yeah. Star Wars soundtracks and movie and you know, duh. Say, say. <laughs> um, but there is a moment that gets me every single time. And it's maybe 15 seconds of music, but it's when they're all escaping Bespin. Mm -hmm. They've already missed Han yep. um, or Han, however you want to say it. And Boba Fett's flying off. And then we cut back to Luke and Vader. And then yeah. we cut back and there's like, dun, 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 Yeah. And it's their escaping, right? Yeah. And then. Yeah, it's like it's like a faster paced Yoda. Yep, it's like, the faster paced of, of the, of the Yoda, Yoda scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we get this. Dun, 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 dun. But then they, they start playing Han and Leia's theme. Right. Bum, 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 as they're running through. Yeah. And I'm with it. I'm there. Yeah. But then they get to the place where R2 has to unlock it and they have to get to the Falcon. Yeah. And then right as he unlocks it, 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 it plays Han and Leia's theme. But this right. grand like sweeping like like crescendo yeah. comes up and he blows the smoke. Mm -hmm. So to kind of guard them. And Williams does this thing where R2 comes out of the mist and this. It just goes. Da -da 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 -da. I get chills yeah. every fucking it's so perfect. time, it's and so it's perfect. that moment. And yeah. I will listen to it, and then rewind it, and then I'll listen to it yeah. and rewind Nerd. it just over. And <laughs> <laughs> I do the same thing. I love it. I it listen just, to pieces like that like over and over again. Uh, yeah, it's car. it's but. those it's those things that happen in the movie, and yeah. not like what maybe they'll release for the soundtrack, right. like the suite. Right. Yeah. That's and what that's, gets you know, me. I, you know, we're talking about newer composers, but. I do miss that. Like as much as we're getting all these cool, uh, interesting scores with new with new types of sounds. Yeah. 
I I miss because even in the new Star Wars movies, I feel like uh, I don't know if it's the way John's been directed to compose his stuff, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like it's like the old ones. Even like as much as you know, I don't like the prequels. The music in the prequels is fantastic. Oh, the music's so, the best. Yeah. So, um, but I feel like there's a lot of those grandiose musical moments that we had in all of these old school blockbusters, and we don't we're not really getting them nowadays. Yeah. You know, like like we got a great. Uh, 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 you know, Man of Steel, Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. uh, Batman v Superman score, score was great. Yeah, it but was. but um, a lot of superhero movies, a lot of blockbuster movies nowadays, like you 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 kind of just see music as like background. Yeah, you don't you don't see it adding emotions to the to the movie to the mm. story in it, and that kind of I miss that a lot. You Mar know? Marvel was doing that for a while. Yeah, they, a they, long time. They really pissed me off because yes. one, Rowan Jawadi comes out and does Iron Man, yeah. right, and I. Loved that soundtrack yeah. or the the score for right. that. I thought it was really really great. And then we get um, uh, Captain America, and Alan Silvestri creates an iconic theme yeah. for Captain America. Then Patrick Doyle comes in for Thor, yeah. and that is one of my favorite superhero scores of all time. Oh, is it? Okay. Have you listened to, yeah, to yeah. Thor? Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. there's something regal. Yeah. There's something heroic about it. Yeah. There's something like very like. British about it, yeah. like very, like, you know, yeah. like high society, like yeah. kings and queens. And it makes sense because Patrick Doyle is Kenneth Brown's right. uh, composer, did Hamlet, did, you so know, all of his, yeah, yeah, very Shakespearean. So then, um, then all of a sudden it was gone. Yeah. And, you know, nothing against some of the composers that came in, but we were, mi I'm missing the. Well, I don't think it's the composer's fault. Like even, no, it's even, not. Um, they, I, cause, cause you I have don't think to, they like... want to pay the light, the, to, and, and I, I heard this, I don't know if it's true, but it was like. You know, when you create a theme for yeah. Thor, yeah. Captain America, Superman, yeah. what have you, people, you know, especially Williams, but they license that. And then you have to, if you want to use it again in the mm -hmm. next movie, you're going to have to, if you don't have that composer coming on to work yeah. on it, you're going to have to pay him for that thing, right? right? So then all of a sudden in Thor The Dark World, that Patrick Doyle score is gone, yeah. just completely gone. And I'm like, wait a minute, you, yeah. you took away a lot of the stuff I love about Thor. Yeah. Um, Alan Silvestri doesn't come back for Winter Soldier. Yeah. No cap theme. And right. I'm like, just a little bit at the beginning when he's running around. Right. Um, and that's like, great. But I was wondering what happened. And then finally, they're starting to come back. They brought Alan Silvestri back for Infinity War. We get the Avengers theme. Yeah. We got a little bit of uh, the Thor theme at the end of Ragnarok, which I loved. Yeah, but even, I mean, and again, I don't think it's the composers because you have really good composers working on these movies like uh, Brian Tyler, you know. Oh, yeah, Brian and, Tyler's and, great. Uh, uh, like even Danny Elfman, you know, Danny did Elfman. one of those movies, you know. And, yeah, uh, did Age you know, of Ultron. Speaking with, of, right? Like, yeah. Hello, yeah. best superhero theme. I know you love Superman, but this is my favorite superhero theme of all time is Danny, Original Danny, Danny Elfman's Elfman. Batman. So, dun, yeah, dun, dun, it's great. Dun, dun, it's just everything. Michael Keaton, everything. It's just – That's yeah. – it's the best. Yeah, that's like – that should be my ringtone. Um, but mm. um, I think that – and I was, I was actually thinking about temp music. Yeah. Because when a director is filming the movie, you know – and it goes to post, like they have temp music there right. when they're editing. Right. And then the composer comes back to the director and says, okay, so this is what I came up with. Yeah. And a lot of the time I've heard that directors are like, can you make it more like the temp music we already had? Yes. And that's why so many of those movies end up sounding similar. Yeah. And 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 melodies and, and like motifs are get lost. Yeah. Because they, and I don't know, it's just like the director not you know, caring about the music as much. I don't know what it is, but it's it's funny that um, I was thinking about that and then I saw some interview with Danny Elfman yeah. who, who who literally said, like, temp music is the vein of my existence. And I was like, oh, there it is. It, it is. So. And, I, and I think um, there was a great video that came out for Marvel about the Marvel music. And I think it might have, I don't know if this is the same thing, but I did see a Danny Elfman, God, who else was with him? But they were talking about the temp score yeah. because... The director especially, yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, you could look at the director as being like, I think they get too attached. Exactly. They start to hear it. Yep. They, like, and Legends of the Fall was uh, been used in temp tracks mm -hmm. so many times. Um, and I think they get so married to that idea because mm -hmm. they're cutting their movie to it. Yeah. And then they like it and they, they, they're using great yeah. scores. So yeah. every people, unfortunately, humans don't like change, which is bad. It's something that we're really bad at. And and me. Yeah. no, all I of hate us, change. all of yeah. us. But uh, but I think but when it comes to music, I think that that's where you can explore. And it comes to art, like you should be, you know, exploring all these different sounds. Like right. like Ramin Jawadi, you mentioned him. Like he did a great score. It's he's he actually made one of my favorite horror scores for the remake of Fright Night. 
Oh my God! It's super really cool. He did Check Fright Night. Yeah. yeah, and it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's. A, I actually didn't not like. I actually ended up really liking the remake, and I love the original. And it's a really cool horror score, and it's just like it scores like that. They get lost because people don't go see the movie. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's super sad. I love that Fright Night remake. Yeah, it's great. It was great. I still like the original more. But, well, yeah. You know, because you know Chris, Chris Sarandon. Sarandon. <laughs> Hello. He's the coolest. <laughs> He's the best. Yeah. Are you going to invite me in? Yeah. Well, yeah, come on in. Oh, you're <laughs> fucked now. <laughs> so good. Uh, I love the fact that you brought up all of these wonderful composers. Yeah, they're, they're, I took notes. Everybody at home listening at home right now, I hope you took some notes, and I hope you enjoyed um, the idea of, of listening to scores as, like, the oxygen, the the, the heart, the soul yeah. of the movie. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing that puts me in a better mood if I'm in a crappier mood. Yeah. Is, is score music. It's it's the best. Music in general is is the best there is. And music attached to cool looking stuff. I mean You can't beat it. No. You can't beat it. So Darina, I can't believe it. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks and for having me. Of course. This I want to have you back. I feel like we just scratched the surface. I literally <laughs> looked down and at my because I timed the, the episodes. I'm yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. I know the red light came on, but I was like, yeah. nah, that's not right. Yeah. We still have nope. We've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Um, we can talk for about this for hours and hours and hours and days. We yeah. can. So please, anything you would like to plug, uh, you know, tell us where to find you. All um, that good stuff. You can find me on the YouTubes. <laughs> on the YouTubes. Um, uh, my uh, channel is called Super Dork House. Um, I'm going to upload some more content soon because I've been bad at it. Uh, <laughs> but there's content there. And then um, I also actually at, at, at my job, um, I sometimes uh, host uh, Toxic Google, oh. which is our, our Toxic Google program where we bring in uh, a bunch of uh, either celebrities, authors, actors, you know, all, all kinds of people uh, to do kind of like a sort of Comic-Con panel slash TED Talk. Okay. And so um, I got uh, last year I uh, got to interview like Tom Morello. Oh, um, I yeah. got to interview uh, Mila Kunis and uh, Kate McKinnon. And uh, I actually, uh, for the nerds, I got to interview uh, uh, a f- DC Comics writers and artists. And that was oh, really man. cool. Like uh, Brian Michael Bendis, uh, Dan oh. Jurgens, Paul Dini. Like it was, it was really cool. Oh, man. Um, and so uh, you can just go to the Toxic Google uh, YouTube channel and, oh, and wow. find those talks there. Uh, and there's a new, a, a new upcoming one that I'm doing with Tina Guo, who's actually Hans Zimmer's cellist. Oh, my God. Yeah. So she's really great. And, and she's going to be uh, coming in and like end of the month. So we'll have that up in like February. Hey, yeah. Tell me when to, uh, that goes up. Yeah. I want to yeah. see it. Yeah, for sure. That's really cool. Well, again, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, I'm going to have you back. We'll go in a little bit deeper. Maybe we'll like talk on the Blade Runner, mm-hmm. just yeah. go like deep dive on Blade Runner and, and that music. Cause yes, because I, now... I can talk about that. for. I was actually on Joseph Scrimshaw's Obsessed podcast, and we just talked about Blade Runner. That's awesome. So we can do that. I'm happy to do that. I did Friday the 13th with him over Halloween. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, I love Friday the 13th Ooh, movies. They're cool. so stupid, but I love them but so they're much. Awesome. Yeah. They're awesome. Jason is, you know, not a good guy, but, yeah. you know, that's neither here nor there. And a podcast for another time. <laughs> Uh, Well, that'll do it. This has been episode 31. Thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Riley Roundtable with Darina. Uh, Just kicking ass as usual. Talk at scores and soundtracks. Thanks to my executive producers of the Riley Roundtable, Courtney Rose, Dylan Steiner, Kyle Gabrant, Zach Anderson, Dave Hamm, Timur Buta, Christian Hestas, Kyle Harlow, and Mike Frazier. You guys are all my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much. If you do want to support the Riley Roundtable, patreon.com forward slash Riley Roundtable. You can be an executive producer like those fine people I said, but that'll do it. Episode 31 is in the books. It drops every Thursday on the one-on-one with Christian Harloff podcast one feed. You can find us there and on Collider podcast here at Collider video. Thank you so much again, Dorena. Any last words? Um, May the nerd music force live long and prosper. Everything be with you. That's right. And eat tacos. Eat tacos and see you next week. Bye-bye.